I have listed here every possible primitive type in C-sharp that I could think of. It may or may not be a complete list. I'm not quite sure. On the left is what you'll see as the shorthand, what we usually type, and on the right is what the compiler actually replaces the shorthand with. There is nothing stopping us from doing what the compiler is doing. We could certainly copy this and paste this over here, and it is identical to what I just pasted over. Saying uint is the exact same as saying system.uint32, because the compiler literally just replaces uint with system uint32 and it's critical that the system dot is in here because it's not assumed that you have a using system at the top of the file so even though I take that using system out the program still builds just fine because the compiler prepends the type name with the appropriate namespace name as a side note and I should do a video on namespaces but namespaces are kind of a misnomer and I don't know it's a now, uh, I should do another video on it. But essentially, when you have a namespace, literally, this is just part of the type name. And the type name is system period uint32. There's nothing special about the period. It is just another character in the full type name. But that's probably another video for another time. Anyway, uh, I'll even get rid of this using system up here. So... I've tried to order these in the order that they kind of get bigger and bigger. A byte, if you remember, a byte is 8 bits. It's the smallest type there is. And then there's a signed byte, which means we're going to interpret the bits as signed versus unsigned. Um, on the contrary, though, we have short, which we interpret as signed. And then we switch and say, well, if you want the unsigned version, then it's you short. And same thing, int, you int, long, you long. So. When we just say the basic type name, we get the signed version. Otherwise, we have to explicitly request with a U saying, no, 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 no. Use that extra bit uh, to interpret a positive value instead of having it be a negative value. So that's why that's there. Now, go watch the binary, video, binary numbers video playlist. In there, I have... Several videos showing how to interpret values as signed and unsigned. It's critical because once we say signed or unsigned, that totally shifts our range of numbers and what we can represent. But anyway, byte and s byte are, are a little bit flipped from the rest. We have short, u short, int, u int, long, u long. And then up here we have byte, s byte, meaning signed. So when you say byte, you're actually getting the unsigned type. And when you say S byte, you get the sign type. I kind of wish they weren't inconsistent that way, but whatever. Now, 99% of the time when you're writing a loop or you need to do an integral number, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or maybe negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, you know, those counting numbers, uh, you'll type int. Okay, but when you say int, you're really getting four bytes. And more often than not, you actually do not need four bytes to store whatever value you're trying to store. It could be, the values could be simple, 0 to 100 or 150 or so on and so forth. And if you're only going that high, say your maximum is 255, all you really need is a byte. However, we're just accustomed to typing an int because int means number and we type int and int and int, but, but really you're taking up extra bytes you don't need. And I think it's interesting as we, you know, we say, oh, we have all this room and all this RAM, and we got, you know, let's just waste it. You know, let's be like like some uh, government agencies, and hey, we got the room, why don't we just waste it? And so I think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not advocating go ahead and change all your ints to bytes, but I do want you to, you to be aware of it, for sure. And um, just because we have room doesn't mean we should waste it, it by any means. Um, there's issues of cache coherency and stuff I could go into as well. We want things to be as compact as possible. And then when you say int and say your range goes from 0 to 100, but very quickly it could go 0 to 522, well, byte will not accommodate that. You'll have to have an int or the maximum value of a short and so on and so forth. Speaking of that, what is the maximum value of a byte? I, I said it in this video already, but can you remember? I'm going to console write line byte dot max value and I'm going to backspace over this, control dot, and get my using system back at the top here just so I don't have to prepend console.write line with system all the time. Anyway, what is the max value? Are you aware? Do you know why the value is what it is? Let me bring it up here. It's 255, which if you're not comfortable with binary and hex, again, I 
strongly encourage you to go watch those playlists. But 255 hopefully should ring a bell with you. In fact, I remember I was playing Tickle Toes. If you Google the game Tickle Toes, electronic game, it's really fun, actually. It's you, it's a foot, and you have to push the toes, and the toes... Anyway, it's a lot. Go YouTube it, you know, and you get the idea. But it gets faster and faster, and you just feel like you're awesome, and I'm cranking away on this, and it's taken me, like, all Christmas break. I bought Tickle Toes over Christmas break, and all Christmas break, I'm just cruising in my high score. I'm just going, and I know I'm going, and then it just stops. You know, I didn't mess up. The game just stopped. And it said, you got 255 tickles. And I'm like, really? I could have gone further. You used a bite to store the value? That's all you guys did? For real? Oh, it was so frustrating. Anyway, let me bring up the Windows calculator here. View, programmer. Oh. Let me get my drawing tool up. And I... I just a refresher. Here is the first 32 bits. Here's the second 32 bits. That's the largest number I can store with this calculator, 64 bits. When you say byte, however, this is the most amount of bits that you get, these four. And the highest I can go, the highest value I can go in here is all of these digits set to their maximum value. Well, it just so turns out that the maximum value we can count to in binary is 1. So I'm going to click on binary which means I only get a zero and a one. I'm going to go one, 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 one. See these fill up one. So all these bits are filled up. That is one byte busted into two groups of four, which make a nibble. I'll go view, uh, scientific, oh, for real. I just messed that up. Let me go back to programmer. One, 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 one. And let me click on decimal. Oh, look at that. The highest value we can store with a byte is 255. Hence, Byte dot max value is 255. Well, what's the min value of a byte? Well, that would be everything cleared out, like so. So that would be a zero. Let me just prove it to you. Byte dot min value, control F5, ah, it's zero. All right, well, let's look at uh, S byte here. All right, if I say console write line S byte dot max value, and then control L, control VV, and let me do the min value here. What will print? Any idea? And right, if you're comfortable with signed values and unsigned values, hopefully you can figure this out. But it's still 8 bits. What's the maximum signed value we can st we can store with a signed byte? Uh, with a byte, sorry. What's the maximum signed value we can store with a byte? Then what's the minimum signed value? And signed means negative or positive. Okay, what's the minimum sign value pause the video and work that out okay let me run this program and here we go 127 and negative 128 again go watch my uh, binary sign videos in the binary playlist uh, to understand where these values are coming from but if you notice let me bring up the calculator again and I'm going to say 255 I'm in decimal right 255 divided by 2. Oh look, it's 127. Okay, so it's like we shifted half of the range of a byte down into the negative zone and it landed at negative 128. Anyway, so the range, let me let me draw something here. Here's a number line. Alright, here is 0. Okay, and here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 1, or no, 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 let's do 255. All right, 255, and then right here is 127, okay, and then right about here is negative 128, and then this will be negative 255, just to make our number line complete. Well, if you notice, sine bytes max value is this, sine bytes min value is this, so the range of a signed byte, all right, I'll wrap this up in red like this. Sine byte uh, is from negative 128 to positive 127. Now, the range for just a regular byte, meaning an unsigned 8-bit value, which I'll circle in green, that range is from here to here. Alright, so in some cases the range overlaps 
right, right here. We have some overlap between the two. But then there are values which a uh, regular byte can store that a signed byte cannot store because a signed byte shifted the range down into this negative zone. So the signed byte can store these values, whereas the byte can't. And the byte can store these values, whereas the sign byte can. So it depends on what kind of range you want. Uh, if you want to go up to 255 and, and you're only going to be positive, then you're sure, use a byte. right? But if you need to go positive and negative and you're not going to go past these bounds of negative 128 and 127, use a signed byte. All right? And the only difference between using these bytes versus shorts versus ints is the the size of this range. For example, an int, it doesn't use just one byte, it uses four bytes. So if I drew an int here, it'd kind of go off the screen. And remember, an int is a sign value, but basically we get a much larger range, but we pay for that range you by using more bytes. Alright? Anyway, this, besides, besides larger range, that's the only thing different between bytes versus ints versus longs. You want a long? Yeah, I'll start it off way off the screen and come in here and go, it's 64 bits, right, which is 8 bytes, so much larger range than what a int or a byte can store. But it, it totally depends on how much range you need versus, uh, sorry while well, I erase the screen here, versus whether you need negative or just positive values, that sort of thing. Like if we're counting the number of people in a family, well, hopefully, I think the largest family I've heard of personally is 16. You know, I'm in Utah, so so families get kind of big here, and, and, and when we get those special sections of the state where families kind of group together illegally, well, then they can grow into maybe 150. Who knows? I'm, I'm guessing here. I, I really don't know. But even if we had 150 people in the family, well, we're not going to have negative three people in the family. It doesn't That doesn't make sense. And if we only have 150 people in the family, well, we don't need an int to store that value, so why not just use a byte? Anyway, hopefully you're getting the idea. Now, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about casting and converting between these types, and why C sharp uh, basically puts the safety on and doesn't allow you to blow your head off unless you want to do so explicitly.